Emperor Pu Yi married two women on the same day, his empress Wan Rong and his consort Wen Shu. But on the wedding night, he took one look at his brides and fled. Many thought the teen was simply inexperienced, but modern historians suggest a more scandalous reason for his disgust. When Wen Shu was born in 1909, it didn't look like she would become the next imperial consort of China. Although she was part of a fairly respectable Mongolian clan, her family lived in genteel poverty, and Wen Shu often helped them make an income by selling goods. But then everything changed. When she was just 11 years old, the current emperor of China, Pu Yi, began looking for a bride, and Wen Shu was about to meet her fate. Thanks to her family connections, Wen Shu was on a long list of suitable candidates to marry Pu Yi. This, however, was an extremely undignified process. The dowagers of Pu Yi's court controlled the search, showing him photographs of women he had never met and heavily advising on his choices. As it happened, Pu Yi's eye landed right on Wen Shu's photo, even in a sea of other photographs. With the Emperor of China making Wen Shu his first choice, it should have been smooth sailing for her to get to the throne. But some of the dowagers disapproved of Pu Yi's choice, arguing that Wen Shu wasn't from a rich enough family. Instead, they wanted him to pick a girl from a better family. Her name was Wan Rong. One of the dowagers didn't hold back and also claimed Wen Shu was basically too ugly to become the Empress of China. To add insult to injury, Wen Shu's rival Wan Rong was classically beautiful. Eventually, Pu Yi caved and chose Wan Rong as his future Empress. But obviously, Wen Shu's story doesn't end there. Pu Yi's new plan was to marry Wen Shu after Wan Rong, making her his secondary consort. It was the beginning of a destructive, horrific love triangle. When Wen Shu heard the news that she was to be an imperial consort of China, her life changed fast. Her once poor family now had loads of money, and Pu Yi even gave them a mansion as a thanks for their daughter. Consort or not, Wen Shu was entering an imperial marriage, and that meant a gauntlet of etiquette training. For weeks before the wedding, she learned how to act around Pu Yi and his court, as well as how to carry herself like the wife of an emperor. Disturbingly, this involved a lot of learning how to kowtow in front of the ruler to show her submission. This would all be an omen of the nightmare to come. When she finally arrived at Pu Yi's palace in the Forbidden City in Beijing, it got very real very fast. Etiquette now controlled every part of Wen Shu's life, which had turned into a heady mixture of luxury and humiliation in equal parts. Still, at least Wen Shu had now met her future husband up close, yet if she knew the full depths of his depravity, she might have run the other way. Pu Yi, as it happened, was a complete and infamous head case. He'd been the emperor of China since he was a toddler and was surrounded by people rushing to fulfil his every whim. It was a recipe for a spoiled sociopath. In 1922, at the age of 12, Wen Shu married Pu Yi in a ceremony that was the opposite of romantic. For one, she was barely old enough to understand what romance was, but for another, Pu Yi had only just come from his marriage ceremony to Wan Rong. Yep, he married two women on the same day. How's that for efficiency? Wen Shu might have been second rate in the eyes of imperial etiquette, but Pu Yi still preferred her to his official empress. When Wen Shu met the new empress Wan Rong, she was supposed to kowtow to her as she did Pu Yi. However, in a show of favouritism, the emperor signalled that Wen Shu didn't have to kneel for the empress, and by doing so, started a lifelong rivalry. Wan Rong probably knew the rumours that Wen Shu had been first choice as empress, and this one moment confirmed all her worst fears. In truth, 
Both of these women were playing a losing game. They just didn't know it yet. Soon, Wen Shu settled into the enormous and cavernous Forbidden City, but in these deluxe surroundings, she endured brutal treatment. Her apartments were remote and isolated, fitting her status as a meagre consort. The Emperor made an effort to see her, and Wen Shu came out of her shell little by little. A soft, shy girl, she liked Chinese operas, listening to records, and singing. In particular, she liked to read, and so did the Emperor. The two of them would read together, and Pu Yi even let Wen Shu's birthday become an official palace celebration, which wasn't the done thing for a consort. But not all her time with the Emperor was good. In addition to being a full-blown sadist, Pu Yi also had a childlike view of the world, and not in a good way. He was constantly playing stupid, cruel pranks on everyone from his servants to his wives. Each hour that Wen Shu spent with the Emperor made Wan Rong that much more envious and angry. In particular, she hated when Pu Yi elevated Wen Shu's status by doing things like celebrating her birthday. After all, she was Empress. Soon, the Empress's deep jealousy over Pu Yi's favouritism hit breaking point. Eventually, Wen Shu and Wan Rong began arguing openly, staging loud, spiteful fights for everyone in court to see. The Emperor, faced with arbitrating between his wives, chose the path of least resistance and fell back on tradition. Wan Rong was his Empress, so she must be right. The consequences were devastating for Wen Shu. Pu Yi began to pull back from their close relationship, and she became even more lonely than before. Once Wen Shu fell out of the Emperor's favour, the rest of her life fell apart too. She no longer had his protection, and so the whole palace turned against her. Her own servants would now bully her, taking the hint from their ruler that Wen Shu was weak and vulnerable. However, the worst torment didn't come from them or Pu Yi, it came from Wan Rong. One day, Wen Shu was sitting in her lonely chambers when a letter arrived at the door. It was from Wan Rong. In the message, the Empress of China wrote sarcastically and sneeringly, I haven't seen you for days. Are you still feeling sorry for yourself? Wan Rong was obviously a sore winner, but she wasn't finished. The Empress now began writing poetry that mocked Wen Shu, sending them over for the consort to read and weep. In these, Wan Rong would specifically make fun of Wen Shu's loneliness. Wen Shu responded by helping to fix Wan Rong's typos. People were so childish back then, you wouldn't see that kind of pettiness these days. Anyway, don't forget, Wen Shu was still incredibly young at the time, and her existence on the margins of royal life slowly started to break her down. Soon, the utter loneliness of her palace life was nearly unbearable. She went on to call the Forbidden City a macabre grave, and admitted, The nights were so long and so horrible, the loneliness in my heart was hard to be rid of. Only, she wasn't the only one. No matter who Pu Yi was putting his attention on, neither of his wives could come out on top. After all, he would later describe them as furniture or tools. Wan Rong, despite her victory over Wen Shu, soon realised this, and Wen Shu watched as she went right into a total breakdown. Wan Rong always had something of a fragile mind, and life as Pu Yi's empress wasn't quite the comfort she was hoping for. After months of enduring his sole affections, Wan Rong began smoking opium to help with the stresses of being empress, which then developed into a full-blown dependency. Not that Wen Shu was doing much better. While Wan Rong's despair led her into dark fantasy worlds, Wen Shu's coping mechanisms were far more brutal. By now deeply depressed, she sometimes drank herself into oblivion. But that was on a good day. In Wen Shu's writing from this time, there are several mentions of her thinking about harming herself. 
1924, just two years into Wen Xu's marriage to Pu Yi, her entire life was turned around. That year, there was a coup in Beijing, called the uh, Beijing Coup. Suddenly, Pu Yi was no longer emperor, meaning Wen Xu was no longer a consort either. More than that, the new government wanted Pu Yi and his wives to get the heck out of the Forbidden City, like now. In what was surely already a horrific, stressful time in Wen Xu's life, they gave her, her husband and Wan Rong just three hours to vacate. Yet while Pu Yi and Wan Rong began frantically packing up their entire lives, Wen Xu had a completely different idea, a very dark one. Wen Xu had been living with despair for a long time and this new turn of events threw her right off the deep end. With life as she knew it over, Wen Xu put a shocking plan into motion. She went to the main palace, bowed in front of the altar with a pair of scissors in her hand and very nearly sacrificed herself right where she stood. A servant entered the room and managed to stop her just in time. When Pu Yi heard about what Wen Xu had done, he took it as a sign that she was so loyal to his crumbling empire she'd almost die for it. Suddenly, though briefly, she was back in his favour. When the thruple left the Forbidden City and settled in a courtier's mansion, Wen Xu might have had some hope for her new life without royal titles. But this was no glorious rebirth. For a little while, Pu Yi, Wan Rong and Wen Xu operated as a semi-functional unit, with Pu Yi now spending time with both women and relying on them for advice. Pu Yi was too proud to take his exile lying down, and he soon linked up with the Japanese to get his power back. Wen Xu had a bad feeling about this. She believed that the Japanese were just going to use and discard Pu Yi, and brought up her concerns in public to her husband. His response was fair and even-handed. Not really. Pu Yi was incensed that Wen Xu would question his supreme wisdom, and in public no less. In a fury, he took a feather duster and beat her right then and there. Wen Xu was horrified and humiliated. For all that he'd been a terrible spouse, Pu Yi had never laid a hand on her before. Her rival Wan Rong, meanwhile, was beside herself with glee. It was the beginning of another extremely dark period for Wen Xu, one that would push her to her end game. Soon after Pu Yi's explosive episode, he threw all caution to the wind and moved Wen Xu, Wan Rong and himself to the Japanese-controlled city of Tianjin. It was a declaration that whether Wen Xu liked it or not, their fates lay with the Japanese. Pu Yi made sure every aspect of Wen Xu's life was filled with denigration. While he and Wan Rong lived on the second floor of the house together, Wen Xu lived alone on the first floor. You might think she'd be used to this by now, but she was about to hit breaking point. One day, Wen Xu was minding her own business in the house's garden, then suddenly she made a fatal mistake. She happened to spit on the ground just as Wan Rong was passing by, an accidental act of supreme rudeness according to imperial etiquette. Pu Yi not only refused to believe Wen Xu when she told him it was an accident, but he was also furious at her for lying. For days, he locked her up in a room as punishment until she finally confessed under duress. After that, he still kept her locked up. It was the final straw. Driven nearly to madness, Wen Xu made another attempt on her life with a pair of scissors, and once more, a servant stopped her from completing the act. But the similarities to the first incident end there. Instead of eliciting admiration from Pu Yi, the ex-emperor was even more angry, thinking it was a trick to gain his sympathy. Wen Xu did eventually manage to stab herself with a pair of scissors, but her wound was superficial. Pu Yi, now alarmed that she hadn't just been playing a game, sent for her sister Wen Chan to talk to her and get the situation under control. 
Wen Xu's sister was aghast at the way she was living, and immediately urged her to leave Puyi by any means necessary. As Wen Shan put it, Wen Xu could either choose divorce or she could choose death. From that point on, she began plotting. Instead of showing Wen Xu any scrap of empathy, Puyi only excluded her further. He would often take Wan Rong out on the town and leave Wen Xu home alone to stew in her own sadness. It got so rough, Wen Xu started getting help from someone unexpected. Wan Rong tried to calm things down by suggesting that they all eat dinner together, but Pu Yi sneered, You mustn't. If you call her here, I won't eat. Wen Xu had no gas left in her tank, and one day after enduring yet more bullying from a servant, she scolded the man. This moment set off a chain reaction. Pu Yi overheard and took it as a personal slight. In retaliation, he put out an edict for Wen Xu to die. There was really only one thing Wen Xu could do, and she finally did it. Feigning an outing with her sister, she escaped from the house and drove right to a hotel where a score of lawyers were waiting. Soon after, she officially filed for divorce from the former emperor of China. Pu Yi and Wan Rong referred to Wen Xu's escape and divorce as treason, and they treated her with absolute scorn throughout the legal proceedings. Pu Yi, furious at the shame Wen Xu was bringing him, also refused all her demands for the split, but even he couldn't stop it. The divorce went through, and Wen Xu was free. As a cherry on top, Wen Xu was about to realise just how big a bullet she had dodged. Wan Rong and Pu Yi began to fall apart almost immediately after Wen Xu left. After all, they didn't have their convenient scapegoat around anymore. Pu Yi, who was never able to take responsibility for anything, blamed Wan Rong for driving Wen Xu away and now became cold and distant to his empress. Soon after Wen Xu's exit, Pu Yi fulfilled his alliance with the Japanese and became a puppet ruler in the Japanese-held state of Manchukuo. Just like Wen Xu predicted, it was a disaster. Pu Yi's power collapsed within years, forcing him to flee in 1945 and obviously leaving Wan Rong behind for the wolves. Wen Xu's old rival perished in prison just a year later, hopelessly addicted to opium. Wen Xu's escape from her gilded cage led her into a much different life, though it was also a familiar one from her childhood. Now simply a civilian, she worked as a school teacher and married a military man just two years after Pu Yi's fall from power in Manchukuo. Sadly, the end of Wen Xu's life was one of quiet pain. Eventually, she and her husband fell into poverty, and at the end of her life, they slept in a house together that was only 10 square metres. She died on September 17, 1953, when she was just 43. Throughout all of it, she did have her loving husband by her side, the kind of simple comfort that Pu Yi could never have given her. Wen Xu's supposed fairy tale life as an imperial consort was a sham, and it all started on her wedding night. Reportedly, Pu Yi led both Wen Xu and Wan Rong to his inner chambers that evening, only to take one look at them on the bed and run from the room. To this day, historians can't be sure what exactly drove Pu Yi to flee, though many point to his immaturity. However, there might have been a more scandalous reason for his disgust. Many people closest to Pu Yi believed that he was actually gay. As one of his servants said in a veiled reference, Pu Yi preferred the land way to the water way. Probably a good place to end it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos.